Part 2 of the Teachings for the New Golden Age by the beloved Ascended Master, Kuthumi. Preparing Teachers for the Golden Age. Teachings of the Brothers of the Golden Robe, Part 1. Beloved children of God, the Father, in the name of the Lord Buddha, in the name of the world teacher, and in the name of the second ray, I bring you greetings and blessings of our light, which become for you the gift of illumination. Absorb it, use it, weave it as you will into the perfume of your own being, into the radiant colours of your personal aura, and into that exquisite individual design, which is your privilege and honour to fulfil and manifest in expanding the will of God and the borders of your Father's kingdom. You are the shepherds of the race. You were chosen by the great Lord Maitreya because of a certain wealth of experience and momentum in your causal bodies. You have been given an opportunity to receive more understanding, to make you more efficacious for the spiritual work in which you are engaged, and that is, in purifying yourselves and carrying the word of the Masters to mankind. The choice of life streams who are to receive a more than ordinary blessing is dependent upon the wealth of accumulated good in the causal body. So there is never a mistake made when an individual is invited into the presence of the Ascended Masters and asked to partake of the spiritual food, the instruction at their tables. As has been described to you it is the manu of each root race who chooses individuals for the first initial impulse of incarnation in that root race. They are life streams whose causal bodies are rich in the particular qualities requisite to the building of a foundation of work in the world of form. Those individuals are given the first invitation to participate in the glorious work of pioneering, while others, with a lesser store of the developed momentum of capacities and powers, come later to enjoy the fruits and the harvest planted by the valiant, the bold and the strong life streams who have gone before them. In our activity under the second ray, it is the responsibility of the current world teacher to look upon the pattern which will be the evolutionary progress of the planet for each 2000 year period. The entire cycle consisting of seven such 2000 year periods, making 14,000 years in all. The world teacher is then required through his lieutenants to look upon and study the development of every life stream belonging to the evolution. This is not a small task, because the type of religion and worship that are developed and externalised in each 2000 year cycle will depend entirely upon the capacity of the individuals belonging to the evolution to assimilate, digest and make of their own the gift offered to them. So when the great cosmic wheel turns in each 2,000 years, the wheel making one complete revolution every 14,000 years, the world teacher immediately begins to study the divine plan for the 2,000 year period, then in progress. After which, in cooperation with the Chohan, who is to be the presiding master for that cycle, he develops a system of religion, ceremonial worship, teaching and education, which can best accelerate the progress of the individual and collective units who will use the earth as a schoolroom 
during that particular period. As is evident in the Earth's evolution, the great cosmic wheel has turned many times in its 14,000 year cycle. Initially, it was intended that at the completion of each 14,000 years, each new group of souls was to have reached God maturity and attained their ascension. According to the divine plan, it would take approximately 14,000 years from the time of incarnation for one soul to achieve God mastery. The individual is exposed every 2,000 years to the predominant ray. The rays overlap and interpenetrate each other for a certain time. At present, the Chohans in the consecutive order of the rays are El Moria, Lanto, Paul the Venetian, Serapis Bay, Hilarion, Nada, and Saint Germain. This order was adjusted for a certain change that occurred in 1956 when Sanat Kumara left for Venus. We have now entered the cycle of Saint Germain, which started in May of the year 1954. Of course, the present Chohans have not held these offices from the beginning of time. At the first descent of mankind onto earth, the seven great archangels held the offices of the Chohans. Then, as various life streams evolved, the perfected ones of the race assumed such offices, giving freedom to the archangels to serve in other fields. The divine plan is that the 14,000 year cycle as the wheel turns is necessary to nourish the seven ganglionic centers within the consciousness of the vehicles of man and to make him at the end of the 14,000 years a God dignified prince similar to your master Saint Germain Lord of the seventh ray. You will see that as mankind has inhabited the earth for millions of years, we are far behind in the progress of the entire evolutionary scheme. But now we have come to the turning of the cosmic wheel again. The sixth dispensation governed by the Master Jesus has actually closed and the opening and the outpouring of the seventh ray has begun. With the details of this you are familiar, so I shall not burden you further, except to give you the aspect of the activity of the second ray in connection with this seventh ray service. When Lord Maitreya began to design the world religion with the Ascended Master Saint Germain for his seventh ray cycle, they had to take into consideration first the amount of eternal light the planet Earth and her people were required to give forth by cosmic law or be dissolved. And second, the capacity of mankind, the 10 billion belonging to this evolution to receive and understand the deeper instruction given. This was no easy task because the climax of the 14,000 year cycle should have been reached and every life stream already developed to the status of a Christ under the sixth ray. Every man, woman and child already under the sixth ray should have manifested the mastery that you have seen expressed through the Master Jesus. Then, as the seventh ray comes in and the ceremonial activity is developed, the entire evolution should have been ready to participate 
in the glorious cooperation between the visible angelic host, the divine God men and God women, and the shining elemental kingdom. You can see how far short of this even the shepherds of the race, forgive me, are. Yet, we have but a few years to raise at least the shepherds to a point where the instruction of the new day, the divine ceremonial activities of beloved Saint Germain can be anchored through these shepherds and then brought intelligently by them to mankind. However, at this point, we are fortunate that there are some men and women on the earth who are even willing to listen to us. My beloved brother, El Moria, and I have worked since early in the 19th century to reach the consciousness of mankind. You are familiar with our endeavours through the Theosophical Society, which we bless forever for having at least given an intellectual knowledge to so many people in the Occidental world. We are grateful also to all other channels who have faith in us, for there is no way for the spiritual Great White Brotherhood to reach the mankind of Earth, except through some members of the human race who yet wear bodies of flesh. We must use your lips, your bodies, your consciousness, the conviction and faith of your feeling worlds and the clarity of reception in your mental bodies to convey the pattern and plan for the new era. You will see, therefore, that the greatest individual service you can render us is to purify and harmonize your own vehicles that we may have the freedom through you and through your faith to reach mankind. We are endeavouring in every way possible to present the activities of the various members of the Brotherhood to and through you. Lord Maitreya and Saint Germain, in discussing these plans of activity for this new activity, the bridge, determined, among other things, to bring the Ascended Masters through the veil in feeling, so that you can feel us as living, breathing beings. To this end, Lord Maitreya requested that we might share with you certain personal experiences which we went through, by which we gained our victory as well as certain happiness and also confusions, like those many of you are undergoing at present, by means of which disciplines we, through determination, raised ourselves to our present perfect estate, Ascended Master Consciousness. Beloved Lord Maitreya further desired that the students be made acquainted with the specific activities of the various members of the hierarchy. We are all specialists by training, and when you reach this understanding, it will relieve you of the tremendous feelings of personal disquiet and human jealousy which some individuals manifest with regard to the accomplishments of others. Even within the Ascended Master's realm, beloved ones, we are all specialists. That means that we have taken primal life, which is the beat of the immortal threefold flame in our hearts, and invested it in certain activities, thus becoming masters of the constructive qualification of energy along specific lines. This, in turn, has built into our causal bodies certain momentums of specialised energy that, like money in the bank, is ours to use and call forth when the requirement of the hour demands it. You, too, each and every one 
are specialists in a particular virtue. Your own causal bodies contain certain momentums which you have built into them through services in the various temples, perhaps in the healing temples, or in the political world, or the avenues of mercy or education, or whatever the service may be. Being specialist, as expressed in your diversified causal bodies, you have been chosen as a woman who would select a bouquet, each beautiful flower blending with the other to make a great harmonious whole. The very blending of the colours and the perfumes, the shapes and the fragrance, making that bouquet an exquisite thing for all to see. Thus have Lord Maitreya, Saint Germain, El Moria, and every master connected with the fashioning of the heart centre of this new activity, looked upon the causal bodies of each of you and have drawn you together that the specialisation of your own good might become part of the strength of the whole. It is a tremendous thing because the blending of the good of your causal bodies will build into this bridge the strength required to carry the weight of the entire race that they may pass into fuller and more perfect freedom. Speaking of our specialization, except for the esoteric students, mankind has not understood much of what the various Chohans, Archangels, Elohim and members of the Brotherhood have done or are doing. So Lord Maitreya has asked us, whenever we are given opportunity to speak, to give some portion of that specific service which we render in the divine plan. That is why I tell you that the beloved Lord Maitreya, Saint Germain, and I have worked out a course of religion and ceremonial worship, which we are endeavouring to direct through this heart centre into the consciousness of interested people, and later, by contagion and example, set by our chilas into the consciousness of all mankind. It is regrettable that, so far, so much of our energies have been used in the coaxing of the reluctant energies of the various souls of the student body into any semblance of unity. Thus, we have not been able to bring forth the beauty of the ceremonial worship, which I know will delight your hearts. However, at this point, we feel that unity, harmony, and oneness, which come with understanding, will perhaps give us a platform upon which we may build in the future. You are men and women who have left the mass mind for one reason or another. I know you all well, having had association with every one of you through the centuries, and I love you very much. Now, in this embodiment, you have chosen to rise up, throw off your child's estate, face God and ask for your reason for being. That is a magnificent initiation and accomplishment. Do you know that no angel, master, diva, or elemental would presume to ask for life or the sustaining of that life without knowing his reason for being. Then they strive that all of that life be dedicated to the fulfillment of that very reason and purpose. You, beloved ones, are developing within yourselves 
a respect for life, a reverence for the source of life, and an honour and integrity toward that source. Allow me to suggest that you ask every morning and every free moment through your day that you may be shown the reason for your being. When that is made manifest to you, you will not be dishonest enough to take or use any part of God's life for any other purpose. You will so live that you will not allow any words, acts, thoughts or feelings to benefit only yourself, nor to swerve you from the path, but rather you will see to it that every electron will fulfil your reason for being. When this time comes, you will have made the great surrender. Then, no matter what the challenge of the day, resting in that serenity, knowing your reason for being, you will expand your light to widen the borders of the kingdom of God on earth and bring the words and understanding of the ascended masters to mankind. You will not be weary. You will know no discontent, loneliness, depression, selfishness or sorrow. You will be like the angels, the masters and the divas, joyous. You will have found your reason for being, to do the will of God. We, the ascended masters, shall be most joyously grateful when every student has learned the reason for his being and has consecrated all of those vital energies that flow so freely to fulfilling that reason. That will come in time. We have learned to be patient, for we have waited so long. That patience you too will learn before you walk innocently into the resentful energies of the masses to carry your light. You will wear the garments of patience, that selfless benediction of love from our realm will enfold you and your victory will then be assured. I am asked again to be commentator upon the activities in the heart of the Royal Teton. I was the first one given the opportunity of describing the transmission flame activities and I have enjoyed it extremely. I am, therefore, rather familiar with the process and so shall endeavour to give you a bird's eye view of the activity today, July 1954. The Karmic Board, as you know, listens to the great petitions from the hierarchs of the mighty retreats throughout the world. Everything works in sequence, in ordered service and precision in the Kingdom of Heaven. Therefore, our great spiritual Lord, Sanat Kumara, and the court at Shambhala presented their petitions first. They had to do with the vow which was taken voluntarily by the entire evolution of Earth. 300 million life streams were chosen by the Karmic Board to incarnate in the following 12 months. Through the intercession of unascended beings and the calls that were made, these 300 million stood together before the temple of the Sacred Heart of the beloved Mother Mary and they pledged the threefold flame a vow that when they took embodiment they would live to serve the Lord of the world and all unascended life. As they took that vow and as the unascended beings sang 
that glorious song to the threefold flame. The little flames within the embodying spirits' hearts expanded until they were visible through their white garments. Those were the individuals in their etheric bodies awaiting embodiment. So much light was drawn in enthusiasm that the entire evolution, the 10 billion individuals belonging to the race gathered around and a great many also took the vow. Sanat Kumara asked as his petition that a brother from Shambhala be allowed to stand by every life stream incarnating to help him or her to fulfill that vow through the flesh. Because, beloved ones, you have taken many, many vows and broken them all through the ages. You, the guardian spirits, vowed never to let a shadow touch this earth. Yet look at her today. So, vows taken lightly when you are in the freedom of the etheric body are not always remembered when you wear a heavy garment of flesh. It was the petition of Sanat Kumara that the Brotherhood at Shambhala come in with the incarnating individuals, stand in the aura of the parents, establish a pulsation in the homes where they are to be born and see that no one fails in that vow. It is a most magnificent thing. The beloved Lord Gautama then made his petition. One living Buddha, one God-free Buddha from the inner realms offered to incarnate in the next 12 months. This is a being who has no karma and has no reason for embodiment. He was accepted. Lord Gautama's petition was for the protection of this blessed incoming being and its parents for assistance from his, the Lord Gautama's cosmic heights, to see that this child matures, say, in about 20 years from then, and renders a great service to this planet and her people. Lord Maitreya made the petition for the restoration of the divine memory of the shepherds. For those of you who came from other stars and planets particularly, because you too made a great sacrifice in that you came to earth to help mankind and now you have also forgotten the way back home. He asked that your perfect divine memory be awakened, which included the memory of all the mastery that you knew in your I am presence before taking the first embodiment and the mastery you knew on Atlantis and Lemuria, the record of which is in your etheric bodies, be restored to you to flow again through your outer minds. He also asks that those of you who were with our beloved Jesus might again vitalize and externalize miracles similar to those the beloved master performed. He further asked that when an individual of great light passes from the body and chooses to incarnate again, the wealth of his consciousness would be at his fingertips and he would not have to go through the slow process of growing up to maturity and drawing it out of the etheric body again. Your beloved friend, the Maha Chohan, has asked for many grants. Due to your time limitations, I can give you but a few brief outlines. He asked that through Pallas Athena, truth that has never come forth on this earth before might be revealed through the bridge activity through the cooperation of the students 
in magnetizing this truth and through the cooperation between the Ascended Masters and students in bringing it forth. He has asked for a dispensation because it is his service to breathe the first breath into the infant's body and to take the last breath from the individual passing out in the change called death of painless birth and happy fearless death as long as the latter must ensue. He has asked for schools to educate the imprisoned elementals who are at present so antagonistic to mankind and who form the cause and core of the cyclones, earthquakes, tornadoes, tidal waves and various destructive cataclysmic activities. For he feels that if these elementals can be won over and illumined, they will no longer have that feeling of rebellion and desire for retaliation toward mankind. Through this activity, many cataclysmic changes might be averted that would otherwise occur. He requested again, as you students of Saint Germain have, authority from the Karmic Board and Helios to remove the energy and life from the destructive substance that grows on the surface of the earth, such as poisonous plants, particularly those from which narcotics are produced. He took a long time in the presentation of his many petitions. It is interesting to note that the Karmic Board throughout the hearing maintains a most impassionate expression of their countenance. After the plea is heard, however, they ask who among the assembly would choose to join in the petition and the responses of those who do are recorded in their consciousnesses. Later, after all the petitions are heard, they confer together and make their decisions on the various grants. Beloved Oramassus has also asked for a dispensation. He has secured a great number of fire beings or salamanders and he has asked for a grant to immediately dissolve every deceased form as soon as it is buried in the ground so that it would not be necessary for the elementals to work on that decaying substance. A beloved Archangel Michael, as you know, offered to free your loved ones from the necessity of re-embodiment. I might say this goes back three generations. The editor's note. The students who founded the Bridge to Freedom activity and who formed its initial impulse were promised by the Ascended Host their ascension at the end of their embodiments together with the ascension of their close relatives going back three generations. Lord Michael asked for and received permission to bring all of these blessed ones from the Ascension temples where they have been studying to stand before the karmic board and ask if it saw a change in these people who have been given the privilege of association with the Ascended Masters and the Violet Flame. He is going to ask that every life stream who passes from this earth may not have to come back at all so that the mankind of earth may be freed as quickly as possible thus permitting the new root races to come in, go through their evolution once and finish off the cycle quickly. All of you have loved ones within those Ascension temples. We will appreciate your using the violet flame on their behalf. Many beautiful things take place within the Teton retreat. God be with you today and every day.